the Indian External Affairs Minister uh, would be proceeding to Tokyo just after his meeting uh, with the Chinese Foreign Minister. India remains engaged with China. India has so far uh, been a keen member of the Quad but has been a little shy of getting into a kind of a security oriented arrangement within the Quad. There is what you might call a uh, a developing trust deficit with the United States. I, I don't think the India-US relationship uh, can be replaced by any other relationship. The Americans in particular have tried to influence and meddle in Indian elections. The Americans have uh, just announced that they are going to give over a hundred million dollars uh, to Pakistan. And, and hold your breath, uh, to, they are going to give a hundred million dollars to Pakistan to promote democracy in Pakistan. The Quad Foreign Ministers uh, will once again be meeting uh, towards the end of the month in Tokyo uh, and as is normal, the usual stuff will be discussed which is basically about uh, how the situation in the Indo-Pacific region uh, is unfolding, what are the challenges, uh, what are the things that the Quad countries can do together to coordinate, uh, how they propose to deal with the mounting challenge uh, which all countries in the region as well as the Quad countries uh, face from a, a belligerent China. Uh, so this meeting will be important also for deciding uh, whether or not there will be a summit meeting of the Quad leaders uh, later in this year. Uh, it, there's a bit of a question mark around it, partly because of uh, President uh, Joe Biden's health, the fact that he's now uh, bowing out of the uh, presidential race. Uh, so he is in some ways already a bit of a lame duck uh, and whether any policy initiative which he takes uh, will be carried forward. Uh, maybe if his successor is the vice president, it will be carried forward. Uh, but if it is uh, Donald Trump, uh, then he may have a rethink on the quad. Uh, although while he was president, uh, he, he kind of uh, was okay with the quad countries getting together. So there are going to be these issues that will uh, come on the table. Aside of this, I think uh, from an Indian point of view, what is important is that uh, the Indian External Affairs Minister uh, would be proceeding to Tokyo just after his meeting uh, with the Chinese Foreign Minister. Uh, and, you know, while India and China remain engaged, uh, the militaries are talking to each other, the diplomats are talking to each other. And of course, at the political level, there have been a number of meetings uh, between uh, Wang Yi and uh, Dr. Jay Shankar. Uh, and, and while there seems to be some kind of stability, uh, an uneasy stability which has come in India-China relations, uh, it, there, there is no resolution towards which both sides are moving. Uh, it's the same uh, boilerplate kind of statements which come out. The Indians uh, say uh, something, the Chinese say other things. In fact, if you look at the readouts which have been issued after the meeting between the Indian and the Chinese foreign ministers, uh, it seems that while they might be talking about the same things, they're coming to it from different places uh, and maybe something is being lost in translation between the two sides on what are the kind of understandings, what are the uh, what is the kind of roadmap forward. Uh, but what is important is that India remains engaged with China. At the same time, uh, after this meeting, uh, Dr. Jay Shankar will be uh, meeting, uh, you know, his his counterparts from the other Quad countries, uh, and and we'll have to see how uh, what what is the kind of positioning which India does. India has so far uh, been a keen member of the Quad, but has been a little shy of getting into a kind of a security oriented arrangement within the quad which is why something called the squad has also come into being or at least that's the name which is being given to it uh, it is the other three quad countries namely the united states uh, japan and australia and along with it philippines and 
they have entered into a kind of a security arrangement where they are monitoring the seas, patrol boats and you know all kinds of other things are starting to happen. Uh, there's been some speculation whether the quad is now going to be replaced by the squad, which I think is a bit of a stretch because uh, compared to the kind of pivotal position which India enjoys, uh, I don't see how Philippines, which is a very important member if you are talking about Quad Plus uh, or Indonesia or some of the other Southeast Asian countries, uh, uh, will, will play a very critical role in any larger kind of a grouping uh, to ensure that the Chinese are kept at bay. Uh, I don't see how individually any of these countries or even collectively uh, can replace the salience of India in whatever new arrangements have to be made out. India has been a little uh, shari, partly because of historical reasons, partly because India uh, feels that you know throwing its lot in any one camp is is not going to be ideal for Indian diplomacy, uh, for Indian interests, and that we must keep uh, what we very often refer to as strategic autonomy in place. Uh, one can one can ha point out you know, uh, certain holes in this entire argument, but there is also a lot to commend this argument. Now, there is a lot to commend this argument for a couple of reasons. For example, uh, you know, there is what you might call uh, a developing trust deficit with the United States. India has historically uh, had very uh, close relations at a people to people level with the United States. Uh, the United States has been looked up to, but at the political level, at the governmental level, there have been deep suspicions about uh, the Americans. Uh, you know, their, their tendency and their proclivity to interfere in countries, uh, <clears throat> their, their uh, tendency to, uh, to moralize, to sermonize, to hector countries, uh, their expectations that everybody must be a mirror image of America itself. Uh, is something which hasn't really gone down well uh, with uh, with India, uh, and uh, you know partly because of colonial baggage, partly because India likes to jealously protect uh, her autonomy. Uh, Indians have always been a bit withdrawn uh, when it comes to getting into a very close um, embrace with the Americans, and yet uh, we've seen over the last two decades or so a, a tectonic shift in. Uh, India's perceptions about the United States, the fact that we have a kind of a security relationship, not an alliance uh, or anything like that, but in the sense that we are buying uh, security equipment, defense equipment, platforms from the United States. There are, uh, there are a, a massive range of areas in which there's technical collaboration, there's people to people, there's trade, you name it. Uh, the, I, I don't think the India U.S. relationship uh, can be replaced by any other relationship. Uh, so there has been a, a tectonic shift in how India uh, and the U.S. deal with each other. And I'm not getting into that nonsense of shared values. That's a slogan. Uh, India and the United States uh, had the same shared values of democracy and, 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 and pluralism and what have you. Uh, when uh, the Americans were embracing Pakistan, the dictators of Pakistan who had murdered democracy in Pakistan, they were the most allied ally of the Americans. Uh, and this is not too long back. Even Musharraf was, for that matter, which is uh, in this century. And I'm not even going back into the 20th century. Uh, so, uh, the shared values business is a nice slogan. Uh, it's a good tagline uh, to sell. But beyond that, it is national interests uh, which matter for countries when they get into uh, a close relationship with each other or a partnership. Uh, but I think what has started happening is that despite the massive change that has taken place over the last 20 years or so, over the last few months, maybe a couple of years, you could say that once again, there is that creeping distrust of the Americans coming into India. And it's, it's, this is something which is both ways. For example, the Americans have their own problems and I'll come to it in a bit. Uh, but uh, from the Indian point of view, we have seen a kind of a concerted campaign against India. Uh, 
in in the american media and anybody who tells you that the american media is entirely free on international affairs uh, is 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 you know giving you a cock and bull story uh, this is godi media race to the power or whatever you want to call it uh, so so uh, to for anybody to suggest that there is not been a concerted campaign uh, against the incumbent government uh, i think that's not true there has been the think tanks the media it's it's a singular line of uh, of criticism of uh, you know a drain inspectors report as it can be called uh, of everything which is wrong with india and nothing which is right with india and yet you know at the official level they'll talk about shared values and stuff like that so there has been that factor which has uh, left a bitter taste in the mouth of many indians uh, there have been of course indian leaders who have uh, themselves sought interference from the west uh, but leave that aside uh, the fact remains that there are very deep suspicions that the west the americans in particular have tried to influence and meddle in indian elections we see the american embassy in delhi uh, actually and not only the american embassy other embassies as well western embassies uh, actually uh, patronize uh, people uh, you know who uh, who can be a bit of a problem uh, as far as the indian uh, indian security establishment is concerned uh, and clearly uh, you know there are certain sensitivities that uh, while india in india political dissidence is completely welcome should be there but when uh, foreign uh, embassies start uh flirting with some of these characters and and uh, trying to build them up as some kind of uh, great warriors fighting against some oppression or some kind of dictatorship in india i think that's going a bit too far and this is exactly the impression which one is getting so there is that interference and meddling in indian affairs uh there is uh, there is of course a big problem between india and the united states and this actually runs counter to uh, to understandings within the quad you know is also a group of which uh, has come out openly against terrorism in all its forms and manifestations which has said that they will work together to crack down on uh, on uh, you know international travel by terrorists or their supporters or even uh, crack down on terror finance uh, and other activities of terrorism but yet we see uh, we see when it comes to uh, this khalistani movement uh, there seems to be a completely different approach uh, not just in canada which is become a kind of a safe haven for uh, khalistani terrorists uh, uh, and i think that's very clear by uh, you know you you look at it uh if if you issue death threats against the canadian prime minister you can be booked but if you are issuing death threats and some of them very potent against indian diplomats against indian political leaders then it's freedom of speech this is canada for you which is a very close ally of the americans and the americans themselves have kind of doubled down uh, at least surreptitiously uh, in their support uh, for the khalistanis and there are very serious concerns which are developing in india on the kind of support that the americans uh, are giving to these guys and then of course there are reliability issues the americans in the past used to say when afghanistan was still a very active theater they would say that you know while uh, the us and india have 95% convergence east of india there's only 5% convergence west of india uh, one would have thought that uh, after uh america abandoned afghanistan uh to the taliban uh, there would be greater convergence between india and the united states but clearly there isn't and now we hear that once again the flirtation that old uh you know love affair between the united states and pakistan's military rulers seems to have started all over again uh, and uh, including the fact that we are seeing that the americans have uh, just announced that they are going to give over 100 million dollars Uh, to pakistan and and hold your breath uh, to they are going to give 100 million dollars to pakistan to promote democracy in pakistan uh, this is when uh, an entire election has been rigged uh, 
and uh, none other than the American Congress, the US Congress has passed a resolution on that. Uh, so, they are going to promote democracy, fight terrorism, uh, you know, help uh, cooperate with Pakistan in fighting terrorism as though terrorism is only what uh, happens inside Pakistan and what Pakistan does in Kashmir, which we have seen a spike in terrorism, uh, is not terrorism. Uh, so, this is the kind of and, and of course, the Americans who are going to promote human rights in Pakistan and this hundred million dollars is supposed to give the Americans leverage uh, over Pakistan's close relationship with China. Uh, and clearly, uh, you know, unless uh, the Americans are doing some kind of substance abuse in State Department. Uh, everybody knows that, you know, this this is a kind of a pipe dream that the Americans are selling. Uh, but uh, from an Indian point of view, I think it gives a very clear indication that the Americans are once again trying to uh, trying to flirt with Pakistan and displaying what I would call an abused wife syndrome. That you know, maybe they can reform Pakistan, maybe they can save Pakistan from itself and maybe they can save Pakistan from uh, the Chinese embrace. I think all of this uh, is a bit of a pipe dream, uh, but uh, this is also fueling suspicion in India. Of course, from an American point of view, they can say that, well, the Amer Indians are hedging their bets. Uh, you know, they don't like uh, India uh, keeping up its relationship with Russia, even though that re re relationship has kind of pared down significantly from what it once was. You know, we are not in the 1970s. Uh, again, that's a kind of a slogan Indians very often use of how the Russians came to Indian assistance in 1971 war. Yes, they did, but we are talking about 50 years later, 60 years later. Uh, and the same equations don't entirely hold to anymore. Yes, Russia is a valued uh, partner. Uh, it's a friend, uh, but there are limits to all friendships and there is a limit to a friendship with the Russians as well. And which is very clear from, uh, if you look at the outcomes of Prime Minister Modi's visit to Moscow, it's very clear that while the Indian-Russian relationship is good, uh, but there is no new ground which is being broken in this particular relationship. But the Americans seem to not like it, partly because the Americans are used to a world in which uh, their friends, allies, partners uh, will tow the American line uh, unquestioningly. And uh, frankly, India is not going to be uh, ready to do that. So there is that, uh, there is uh, certainly that factor has come in. Then on the Indian side, we see something else happen in the recent weeks, especially after the elections uh, uh, and including in the budget uh, and the economic survey, uh, suddenly the government in India is uh, opening up to Chinese investments. It sees merit in Chinese investments, not in critical sectors, but in other sectors. Uh, we are seeing that uh, there is going to be a, a kind of easing of the restrictions on issuing uh, visas to the Chinese. Uh, even when we look at the defense budget, if indeed we are perceiving such a major threat from the Chinese, uh, if you look at the data in the defense budget, the revised budget of the last year uh, is more than the current year's budget uh, allocations for defense services. Uh, although we have increased the allocation for infrastructure development along the Chinese border and that's to be welcomed, but the fact that in terms of the kind of preparedness we need to be able to confront the Chinese, because again, uh, let's make no mistake about it. Uh, if we get into a scrap with the Chinese, neither the Russians nor the Americans are going to be coming to our help. Uh, they're not going to be fighting on our side. We have to fight these wars alone. Yeah, maybe we will get some assistance from maybe, you know, some of our partners and uh, friends. But to expect that anybody else is going to come and fight the wars for us, I don't think that's going to happen. Uh, so clearly, India is uh, is uh, seems to be following a policy of engagement with China, and at the same time, not really letting down its guard. Uh, there seems to be a degree of diffidence as well as far as India is concerned when it comes to China. Beyond a point, we are not ready to go. Of course, people will point out. 
that you know uh, we uh, the prime minister congratulated uh, the taiwanese president uh, on the election uh, there have been greetings between taiwan and india uh, india has uh, has has uh, also uh, you know been uh, hosting the tibetans out here we have made some statements on tibet as well uh, so all of that is happening on the side but in terms of taking very solid measures uh against china i don't think that's happening or uh, using any kind of uh, strong issuing any kind of strong statements against china that's not happening uh, so clearly i think even out there uh, we are trying to uh, we are trying to in a sense ensure that things don't go out of hand uh, and partly that is the reason is that we don't really have too much faith in how much the quad countries will actually stand together when it comes to a, a, a kind of a bust up with the chinese so i think uh, we'll have to wait and see that when the quad uh, meeting takes place between the foreign ministers whether it leads to a summit meeting uh, later in the year whether some new ground is broken yes you know there could be some announcements on a range of other issues Uh, which are of uh, a non-strategic nature. Okay, maybe not a non-strategic nature, but at least uh, of uh, of a more uh, more benign nature, uh, not in your face as far as China is concerned. Maybe there could be some other areas of cooperation that are identified. Uh, but uh, will the Quad countries move to a more security-oriented approach? I I don't think that seems to be on the anvil right now. but we'll have to wait and see what comes out of the foreign ministers meeting and later if there is going to be a summit meeting whether uh, there is some kind of a forward movement of a strategic nature or it's more of the same